everybody, this is Matt Doom Master with Alpha Game Reviews, and you've come to the first look review of Destiny Alpha. Obviously, a, I can't provide a full review of the game at this point because I've only played the Alpha, but if you're wondering if you should pre order Destiny, maybe you didn't get a chance to play the Alpha, or you don't have a PlayStation 4, you've gone to the right place. Played uh, about 8, maybe 10 hours of the game. Over the Alpha, got to the maximum level, uh, bought some cool weapons and a new spaceship. Pretty thoroughly played it, so I have a, a good idea of what the game is like and whether or not you should buy it. Now, to start off with, it's worth talking about what Destiny actually is. Because that's not really entirely obvious uh, when you first jump into the game. Some folks have been saying it's a MMO, some people have been comparing it to Borderlands, other people comparing it to Halo with some character creation elements added on. And the truth is it's sort of a mix of all of those different things. I think the easiest way to explain well, it is to tackle kind of the different game into. modes that you experience individually, give you an idea of what, how you actually play the game and what the different options are for you. Uh, the first mode, well not the first mode, but um, probably the one that most players are going to play frequently is the co-op mode against the AI, which is not really like a campaign. This is where the comparisons to a game like Borderlands sort of fall away, because in Borderlands you have a very rigid campaign, and you can go through it in co-op with other characters, but it's, it's pretty linear. Um, there are some small open world areas, but what you do is dictated by a story. Throughout the, throughout the game. And that's not the way Destiny is at all. Um, there are some sort of story missions. There are some strike missions that are a little bit more linear. And they put you up against a series of bosses or tough situations. There's two of those in the alpha. But there's also this game mode called Exploration where you're put into this very large open world like you would normally expect to be in an MMO. Except you're in your own instance and you can either bring people with your strike team, which would be your friends, or you can encounter randomly other players within the in, in that world. They'll be put in and out of your exploration world, um, sort of at random as far as I can tell, to give you a chance to make friends and work together with strangers. The exploration mode actually consists of a series of missions which are very MMO-like. You have to pick up items or kill certain enemies in this open world and you travel around it either on foot or on your vehicle and in addition to those mundane missions there are sometimes these events that show up which are these big boss monsters and you have to take them down within a certain time limit. The exploration mode is a little bit odd feeling at first because you're really let loose without any objectives and sometimes I felt like when I encountered other players in my instance that were strangers they were confused because they weren't really going through any objectives but there are missions and you get bonus experience for doing them and that's sort of the point of being in the exploration mode it just lets you free to go through the beautiful world of destiny and fulfill objectives while scene sites and sort of making your own making your own fun to a certain degree now of course in this exploration mode as well as the story and the strike missions you are up against the AI and I'm happy to report there's a pretty good variety of enemies in this game even just in the alpha which goes up to level 8 so not a lot of gameplay there and that the enemies are pretty intelligent I mean it's what you would expect from a bungee game in fact, there are definitely some things that sort of reference back to Halo. For example, the fallen enemies have weapons that are kind of like a needler. They'll track you around corners a little bit, and they do a little bit of AoE damage, I believe. So definitely a little bit of a callback to Halo there. But these enemies, they duck in and out of cover. They advance forward when they feel like they've got you on the run. They retreat sometimes when you're advancing on them. And generally, they behave very well. It's not going to blow your mind. It's not a huge innovation in AI by any means, but it's what you would expect from really good shooter AI. And there are sort of mini boss monsters throughout the throughout the game to provide additional challenge. 
you'll run into, for example, hive wizards, which are these floating enemies that shoot extremely powerful uh, AOE bolts of, I don't know, magic, plasma, whatever. They have shields, and they're really quite formidable, especially when you encounter them at your level and among other enemies. The best monsters are definitely the bosses that you'll run into. Uh, one that I fought several times is sort of this anime style six legged mech, you know, tank, and he's got several very powerful attacks. He's got weak spots that you have to exploit. And those sort of enemies really require teamwork to take down because you gotta have someone who's distracting them, taking you know, getting the fire away from the rest of the team so they can loop around, they can hit the weak spot and take them down within a reasonable amount of time. Because otherwise a lot of these big boss monsters you see in the events and in the strike and story missions can really take a very long time to kill. And that's one thing I will say about the game, uh, criticize it a little bit, is if you want a single player experience, this is not your game. This is not, again, like Borderlands where you can conceivably play the game and have a, a fair amount of fun just by yourself. I really don't think this game is going to be a lot of fun by yourself. But it does do a pretty good job of pairing you up with strangers. I completed strike missions with strangers that went just fine. So you don't have to have a big group of real life friends to play it. But this is not a single player experience. You should expect to play this game with other people, even if they are people that you don't really know in real life. Now, in addition to the co-op mode, there is also competitive multiplayer. It's called the Crucible. And there was only one mode available in the alpha. It was the control mode. And just, I think, a few maps. Uh, it might have actually even been two if memory serves correctly. But it was a nice little snippet of what's to come. And it was a lot of fun. I will say that if you played Halo and you were expecting exactly that time of shooter, you, you might not be getting what you expected. I feel like it was a little bit more Twitch, a little bit more of a in between the Call of Duty style and the Halo style. You do have recharging shields, but you do have some special abilities, and you do still have a limit of um, two weapons, but those weapons are dictated by the weapons your character carries and not by what you pick up on the field. The overall feel of the game in multiplayer was, was really solid, and the maps looked beautiful. I really liked the map design. And there were also some vehicles on the lunar map that were a lot of fun. I didn't. There wasn't anything as big as like a tank, but you had sort of your ghost-style speeders. They're called pikes. And another sort of mini tank called an interceptor. And they were pretty cool. They look cool. They are responsive and fun to drive. So... You know, the early look on the multiplayer is definitely uh, promising. I will say, though, that sometimes I felt like the weapons weren't particularly well balanced. I don't know if that's because the enemies had weapons that were a lot more powerful than mine because they got it from drops or what was going on with that. It was sometimes a little bit frustrating getting one-shotted by certain weapons. Then again, maybe I just sucked at it because I haven't played Halo in quite a while, so that's entirely possible, too. Now, both the co-op and the multiplayer modes are tied together with your character, who is persistent throughout both modes. Your character is customizable in a lot of the ways you would expect a character to be in a role-playing game. You have inventory, which includes two weapons and a variety of armor. And you get to pick from one of three classes, each of which have unique abilities, including uh, a supercharge ability, which does a hell of a lot of damage, or has some other really cool special effect. There definitely aren't as many character creation options as you would find in a new massively multiplayer RPG like say the Elder Scrolls Online, but what's available is solid and also looks really cool. You know, MMOs have a huge problem with low level characters looking like shit most of the time, having weird clown armor and just not looking any good until they get high level. And that's definitely not a problem here. You look like a badass pretty much from day one. And as you get more and more gear, you look more and more badass. It's really awesome how the character customization works. All the different armor choices have their own you know, visual look once they're on your character. And I really didn't see anything that 
I put on and I was like, ugh, I don't. I wish I didn't have to wear that. You know, uh, I don't know if there's going to be any transmogrifying you know, or any uh, dying in this game, but hell, they might even not even need it considering how cool the characters look all the time. And there are some other ways you can customize your experience as well. For example, you have a ship which sort of acts as your home base, although you don't actually see the inside of it, at least in the alpha. But you do see it when you're transitioning between maps or when you go to orbit, which is sort of this in-between space where you get to pick whether or not you want to go to the crucible or to the co-op mode or to the city called the tower, which is where you buy your various upgrades, get bounties, send and receive in-game mail, and etc. Now, it also must be said that this game is beautiful. Bungie has always known how to make a really immersive, beautiful world from the very first Halo game. And now that they have access to next-gen hardware, they've gone crazy with it. There's all kinds of cool weather effects. There are all kinds of cool water effects. You see a lot of cool cloth effects, including sometimes uh, pieces of your armor. The enemies look awesome. The special effects of the weapons and etc. look awesome. The shadows are very detailed, and they're helped along by a lighting model that is excellent. There's an awesome day-night cycle, and when you get into the interior sections, the way that Bungie has implemented the lighting is just beautiful. There's a really high contrast between areas that are brightly lit and those that are almost pitch black, and it really creates a great atmosphere to different areas of the map. There are parts of the map that are interior and almost feel like a survival horror game because they're so dark and windy and you have all this decaying building around you. And then you come out onto the open world and you have this huge space to play around, shoot enemies from afar, you know, use your vehicles and etc. So on the whole, the graphics look range. great and have an excellent range. There's a lot of variety in the style here. Whether or not they will look that good on the Xbox 360, PS3, and Xbox One versions, I don't know. I would say particularly on the older gen of consoles, you're probably not going to see as good of graphics, obviously. But on the PlayStation 4, it's beautiful. And also, the performance of the game seemed really good. This is supposedly an alpha, but forget this. This was not an alpha. There was no real bugs to speak of. The servers were very stable and the frame rate felt very smooth throughout the game. So, should you buy Destiny or should you pre-order it? Maybe you want to get in on the beta action coming in July. I would say if you have any interest in shooters, yeah, definitely. I had a lot of fun with the alpha experience. I honestly don't usually play games in sort of marathon sessions, but this is a game that I found myself with a hard time putting down uh, all day on Friday and on Saturday as well. Like I said, it's anybody's guess whether or not the higher level content will be awesome or the balance will be good or if, if it will sidestep a, you know, array of issues that tend to plague games in the MMO genre. But even if that does not go as hoped, there's a solid leveling experience here and probably a good 30 or 40 hours of fun to be had just making your character as awesome as you would like. So there you have it. Destiny definitely looks like a buy or pre-order right now. The game's going to be out for PlayStation 4, Xbox One, Xbox 360, and PS3. The PC version may be planned, but will not be released alongside the console versions. And if you pre-order it uh, right now or in the near future, you will get access to the beta, which is going to be arriving on July 17th. This has been Matt Doom Master with Alpha Game Reviews. Thanks for watching. As, as usual, if you like what you hear, hit that subscribe button.